I debated making this video since it's hard to judge characters properly without having used them through thick and thin, and I definitely haven't used every character myself. But I've been seeing lots of tier list videos recently and most of them refer to the Pridewind tier list, which I don't think is the best resource for newer players. While I appreciate the effort Pridewind puts into the website, I personally think KQM has higher quality character guides. But the reason I'm making this tier list is because it can be quite daunting for new players to figure out who to focus on first, and I want to share my experience with the game so that newer players have an extra point of reference for making their own decisions for their account progression. Some characters do very well in the Memory of Chaos, but then are hot garbage in pure fiction, and the opposite can be true as well. Many pure fiction characters struggle with MOC, so for newer players, or those with very limited resources, it will save you a lot of headaches in the future if you start by building characters that can carry you through all content in the game, instead of building highly specialized units. Also, some characters take a lot less effort to achieve satisfying results, while others require high investment to achieve similar results. I'll begin with the S tier, which I consider to be the safest picks to build. These are characters you can safely pull for and build without worrying about breaking your account. Since these characters can be effective in the MOC, Pure Fiction, and in all simulated universe game modes. I have five characters in here, starting with Ran Mei. Ran Mei is a universal buffer who buffs the entire team, she can be used with any DPS characters, regardless of whether they are HP scaling or attack scaling, regardless of if they are damage over time, break damage, or crit damage based. She can even allow for dual carry teams where you would want multiple damage dealers like a Jingliu Blade team or a Topaz Doctor Ratio team. In addition to incredible team-wide damage buffs, she makes breaking enemies easier and stronger and extends the broken state of the enemies, meaning she can act as a pseudo-sustain character by reducing and delaying enemy actions. Ron May is just insane and will work for you in all content. Acheron is currently the strongest DPS character and the easiest one to enable. Just pair her with Pella, Gwynaifin, and Fire MC and you got yourself a very strong budget team that should perform for you in both the MOC and Pure Fiction as well. Acheron excels in all content in the game and her only issue is how fast you can stack up her ultimate. For the overworld, she greatly improves quality of life by instant killing mob enemies, saving you so much time when doing story quests or simulated universe. Regardless of if you're a sweaty gamer or a casual, this time-saving mechanic is game-changing. Fu Shren is my third choice, because she is a comfy sustain character release so far. And disclaimer, this video is coming out before Aventurine releases, so I actually don't have much experience with Aventurine himself. But the reason Fu Shren is so comfortable to use is because she prevents your teammates from getting one shot, she provides CC prevention, she provides a crit rate buff to your whole team, and she basically lets you challenge content that you shouldn't be able to clear, just because your whole team becomes unkillable. So if you're pushing simulated universe or early MOC stages, Fu Shren can let you go at it without worrying about dying. Now you can't push it too far, because she can still get one shot, especially if you're facing very hard hitting AoE attacks. And also, she doesn't do much to prevent damage over time, since she blocks CC, but not debuffs. So she's not omnipotent, but I equate her to Zhongli from Genshin, a comfort pick that turns the game into easy mode. She's great in the MOC and in Simulated Universe, and she's actually not that bad in Pure Fiction because she can make her runs more consistent with the crit rate buff and the CC protection, though you probably can just brute force Pure Fiction without her once you get strong enough. The fourth pick, I would choose Sparkle, because she makes playing your team so much easier with all the extra skill points on top of her crazy buffs and action advance. You could pull off some insane plays with Sparkle, and she's pretty universal as well. The reason Sparkle is lower than Ron May is because Sparkle is better suited for hyper carry teams where there's only one main damage dealer, and she doesn't fit as well in multiple carry setups as compared to Ron May, though Sparkle still does provide decent party wide damage buffs. Finally, I am putting Huo Huo up here as another support sustain character, although personally I don't have a Huo Huo and can't speak from experience. I know she is great in the MOC, and I have seen her do well in Pure Fiction too, because she provides attack buffs and energy funneling while also providing healing and cleansing, so her kit has more than enough utility to earn her a top spot in this tier list. Huo Huo isn't as comfy as Fu Shrine when it comes to survivability, but she leans closer to being a harmony support with all the buffs she provides. We move on now to the A tier, and as you can see, I have two A tiers. The first row is for characters that are relatively obtainable, and the second row is for a limited banner 5 stars. I personally value the obtainable ones much more, since that's what most new players will have access to early on, and so these will likely be your first few characters you have on your account. The best accessible unit is Ting Yun. She is an insane 4 star support. She provides attack buffs, damage buffs, and energy funneling. 
although only to one character, therefore she is generally used in hyper carry teams. She has incredibly high base speed and can be skill point friendly, though sometimes optimal play requires heavier skill point usage, but that's for when you decide to get sweaty with Ting Yun and attempt those zero cycle shenanigans. Any unit that uses energy and wants to ult frequently will greatly appreciate Ting Yun. Personally, I recommend just focusing on speed over set effects until you get good enough relics that are on set. Get your Ting Yun as fast as possible and ideally around 2500 attack before throwing the rest of the stats into HP and defense so that she doesn't die. Branya is next in line and you can guarantee her from the 300 standard wishes or you can snipe her off the beginner banner 50 wishes. She has a 100% action advance with a cleanse so you can always guarantee a character go right after her and this is very strong because it can either make your DPS go more often, or you could use it to save your butt when your healer is CC'd and you desperately need a bailout. Branya provides damage buffs, attack buffs, and crit buffs, but she's also a hyper carry focused support like Ting Yun, and is slightly less universal than Ting Yun because she consumes more skill points, though if you get Branya to E1-S1, then her skill point problem kind of goes away. Although with certain characters, Branya is still very much a top tier support option, because being able to go more often is generally a good thing. You can run her fast or slow. Fast is when your Branya is built with 161 or more speed, while your carry is running no speed at all, so Branya just drags your carry up to match her own speed. Or you could run slow Branya, where Branya is 134 speed and your carry is slightly faster, so that Branya can essentially double their turns. This speed tuning is hard to achieve early game, so early on I would suggest trying to aim for at least 120 speed on your Branya and 121 speed or more on your main carry if you wanted to do slow Branya. Third in this category is Pella. Pella is a debuffing queen. She applies an AoE defense shred to all enemies and is incredibly powerful. With Acheron's release, she is now even more valuable, but before Acheron, she was already up there as one of the safest picks to build. Before the release of Ron May, Pella was a go-to option for multiple carry setups because her AoE defense shred benefits all of your teammates. Pella is great in the MOC, great in pure fiction, and also incredible in simulated universe with the Remembrance Path cheese strat, and with E6, her damage also becomes very respectable. However, for the early game, I recommend just focusing on building her as a support. The 4-piece win set is generally her best relic option because Pella ults very frequently and the 4-piece win set lets your Pella act more often. Okay, now we have a bit of a gap before getting to the next characters in this tier. I didn't want to make another row, so I'm just stuffing the rest here, but these next characters are a clear step down from the first three. This black spot here will be the separator. Herta is a character everyone gets for free, including her Eidolons, and Herta is a pure fiction machine. She can consistently get you full clear points in pure fiction, regardless of who else you're running on your team. But to be honest, she only really shines in pure fiction. She's also fine for quick farming materials in the overworld, but I don't think she's as good in simulated universe or the MOC. Not that she can't work, it's just that she'll require a lot more effort. Because mobs are generally tankier, and so it's a lot harder for her to proc her follow-up attacks. The reason Herta is a step down from the first three is because she's an AoE specialist and so I think you should definitely build her eventually, just maybe not as your first priority. It's only when you decide to take pure fiction seriously that's when I think you should build her. Asta is up next. She's a great support that's often slept on, since I think she's overshadowed by the characters above her. If you already own three to four of the supports already mentioned, then you can leave Asta alone. But if you don't have many of the previous characters, Asa is no slouch. She gives your whole team a lot of speed, which makes building them easier, maybe even letting them run attack boots instead of speed boots, or helping them reach their next speed breakpoint. There are some wacky scenarios where Asa can help push your characters past 200 speed. Asa also provides attack buffs to the entire team, but this is clunkier to maintain, especially if you're not at E6. If you build her for break damage, she can also do a lot of fire break as well, but that requires fire weak enemies, and I'm not the biggest fan of break because then you have to make sure Asta is the one breaking. But since we all get Asta as our first pull guaranteed, I definitely think you can safely use her until you get the upgrades. But even then, she still has situations where you may want to use her in addition to the other supports. For example, when you're trying to zero cycle the MOC with a no sustained team, or if you want to run her in a pure fiction team that also doesn't need a sustain. 
Asta is viable in every game mode, so she's still a solid support character even if stronger characters have come out. Last one I want to throw in here is March 7th. I think March is criminally underrated because she single-handedly allows every player in the game to cheese through all difficulties of simulated universe with severely underleveled characters just by abusing the Remembrance Path. You don't even need to level her all the way to 80 or to get plus 15 relics, you just need enough effect hit rate and energy recharge to spam or freeze, and then enough HP defense so you don't die. Outside of that, I admit her value in MOC and Pure Fiction may not always be the greatest, but with the right buffs, she can actually really shine. She does AoE damage and freeze, she provides a shield with a cleanse, and she does a lot of follow-up attacks. If the MOC or Pure Fiction has buffs that work in her favor, like with the recent follow-up Pure Fiction buffs or the current MOC vulnerability stacking buff, she can carry your team by triggering endless amounts of follow-up attacks. Obviously, March 7th is way lower on the priority list than Ting Yun or Pella, but you don't need to max her out. She is a very low investment unit that can bring you huge returns on investment. And although her use cases are much more niche, she can be very, very, very strong. Okay, the limited A tier are all viable units, so you don't have to worry too much about where they're placed within the tier. I'll start with Kafka and Black Swan though, because these two are incredibly universal. They're great in the MOC, great in Pure Fiction, and great in Simulated Universe. Alone, I think their value drops slightly, with Kafka being a little more valuable, though they still both remain solid pulls. Together, they form a godly duo. I don't own them, but I see enough clears of MOC and Pure Fiction to know their power. But something inside me is wondering if Hoyo would ever release an enemy that's immune to debuffs or damage over time, which would completely screw over Nihility characters. It probably won't happen, but the Sam boss fight kinda screwed over the Abundance Path, and enemies with toughness protection kinda screw over break teams, so who knows. But what makes Kafka and Black Swan great for new players is the fact that you don't need to build crit on them, so they are a lot easier to build. My personal problem with DOT teams though is that outside of Kafka, a lot of the damage relies on enemies taking turns, which isn't a playstyle I'm fond of, since we don't have a unit yet that can action advance the enemies. If there is a unit that can push forward enemies, then that would be super fun. Next I have Zeola and Blade. These are the two characters I mained for the longest time, especially Blade. I feel both of these characters are slept on by a lot of the community. Zeola excels in all content, though she needs high crit rate or else she won't feel that nice. Meaning you do want to invest a lot into Zeola. She's a single target hunt character, but her resurgence is a strong passive that lets her act multiple times. She isn't the strongest DPS anymore, but she is still very reliable in the MOC and performs very well in Pure Fiction with the right team. I have used Zeela in every Pure Fiction so far for the max 40k points. Blade is my personal favorite HSR character, so I'm very biased here, but while he doesn't have the highest damage numbers, he is incredibly comfy to play, works in the MOC, Pure Fiction, and Simulated Universe, he is autoplay friendly, self-sustaining, flexible, skill point neutral, and his artifact sets in the speed domain, meaning just by farming for your support speed relics, you will no doubt come across insane blade pieces as well. What makes blade extra unique is how little skill points he consumes, meaning you can run the unlimited blade team with Sparkle and Branya to constantly cycle turns with blade, or you can slot blade with pretty much any DPS character and a Ranmei and watch as they pop off. Jing Liu is also in this tier, and the reason she's this low is because my alt account has a very well-built Jing Liu with her signature light cone, and I just don't think she's the tier above these other characters. She's definitely very good, but unless you have Ting Yun and Huo Huo, she will have some downtime. When she leaves her transmigration state, she becomes completely useless. Also, in this state, she only hits 3 targets, so while she's great in the MOC, she's not the best character for pure fiction. You can still get your 30k points, but it will be a struggle to push 40k. And the AI will frequently mess up her ultimate by using it outside of her state, which causes her to lose so much damage. Maybe if I had a Ting Yun and a Huo Huo to keep her in the state for longer, then my experience would be better, but using Jing Liu and then using a lesser built Acheron on the same account, my Acheron just performs better. And with my Jing Liu speed tuned with Branya and paired with Ron Mei, I think my Zeela and Blade perform just as well with the same teammates, and they have better auto battle AI compared to Jingliu. 
But again, Jing Liu is still very strong. Her built-in 50% crit rate makes artifact grinding a lot less painful for newer players. So Jing Liu will definitely work well for you, though you may have to play manually at times since I wouldn't trust the AI with her. Up next, we have Argenti. Argenti is a pure fiction god. His whole kit revolves around constantly ulting and one-shotting waves of enemies. Argenti makes overworld farming incredibly fast as well. If you haven't borrowed or support Argenti, you're missing out on some of the fastest Calyx clears in the entire game. He isn't too hard to play. He just wants as much energy as possible to continually use his fully charged ultimate. I think his MOC performance is also slept on by a lot of people. He has very good single target damage and can put up respectable clears even when off element. I personally feel like Argenti may be more flexible of a unit than Jingleo to be honest. Just because Jingleo doesn't really do pure fiction as well as Argenti can do MOC, at least from my personal opinion. I'm probably not playing Jingleo the right way in pure fiction, but I just haven't been able to get close to 40k points. I know 40k isn't needed, and Jingleo doesn't really struggle to get you to 30k points, but Argenti can zero or one cycle the MOC just like Jingleo while also getting you much easier 40k pure fiction runs. Lastly, we have a spicy one, Jingyuan. This character has a very dedicated group of mains that always gets memed on, but the Jingyuan mains shouldn't be looked down on. A lot of them are very good at this game, since they had to get good to overcome a lot of his shortcomings. Jingyuan can be a very versatile unit. He has both solid AoE damage and can do great single target damage, meaning he is viable in both MOC and Pure Fiction. But Jingyuan comes with clear drawbacks. His skill and alt damage are balanced around the existence of Lightning Lord, so they aren't the most impressive damage-wise, and his Lightning Lord is very slow. You can't get multiple Lightning Lords in one cycle. Lightning Lord also randomly targets, so you can easily get trolled by poor RNG, and god forbid your Jingyuan gets CC'd right before your Lightning Lord goes off, and you'll have to wait another million years before seeing Lightning Lord actually do anything. Jingyuan has improved with new releases like Fushuan and Sparkle, but so did pretty much every other crit-based DPS. Okay, we now move to the balance tier, and I'm probably going to get the most disagreement here. These are characters that I think excel in some aspects of the game, but also have their clear weaknesses. Zeola and Jingyuan have clear weaknesses too, but they are versatile enough that I believe they deserve the A tier. Herta, Asta, and March technically belong here as well, but since they are free characters you get early on, they get special privilege for the new player tier list. I'll lead this tier off with my most controversial take, Luocha. I made a whole video on this, but I did get quite some pushback from unhappy people, so let me expand a bit here. I'm putting him down here mostly because my personal experience with him was not that great. I don't think he's super amazing of a unit in the current state of HSR, where healing isn't as valued yet. I've seen the comments of you guys telling me that Sam will make him a lot better, but I'm not up to date with leaks. It might be true that Sam will make Luocha great again, but she isn't out yet. And as a blade main, I don't think Luocha is even his best sustain in many scenarios. My problem with Luocha is that he doesn't buff the team, and he doesn't help you push content harder than what you can handle. I have used Luocha to try and push MOC stages while somewhat underleveled, and sometimes even on level and trying to pull off a solo sustained Luocha can often feel difficult with resets required and praying a unit doesn't get hit multiple times in a row or gets one shot by a boss's ability. Even in early simulated universe pushes, I always had to pair him with a shielder like Jepard to make sure I didn't wipe, which defeats the purpose of a solo sustained character. For example, if your team's going up against enemies 10 levels above you, Luocha won't save them from getting one shot, and even if he has an auto heal, there is a cooldown for his auto heal and if enemies outspeed you or multiple enemies go before you, then you're likely dead before Luocha can get his second auto heal off or before any of your characters can attack to benefit from his lifesteal. If a big boss attack one-shots your characters, Luocha can't bring them back from the dead. Also, if multiple of your characters get CC'd, Luocha will have to spend skill points to cleanse them, and even then, he can't cleanse them all at once. So while they're CC'd, you might wipe before Luocha can get to his next cleanse. I personally value prevention much more than restoration, meaning I'd rather not take damage and not get CC'd instead of having to heal and cleanse after the fact. At least for now. Maybe leakers know things that I don't, and I'm aware Genshin managed to breathe new life into healers, so Star Rail can easily do something similar. When that time comes, Luocha might move up. 
but I don't know. Maybe I'm playing Luocha wrong since it seems like he works perfectly fine for a lot of you out there, but my personal experience with him has been quite underwhelming, especially when I compare him to Fushun. Next I have Silverwolf. I think the main problem with Silverwolf is that she's single target. Most game modes right now have multiple enemies, and her value falls off the more enemies there are. So she can definitely still be useful in the MOC, but in pure fiction, I don't think she's that good. Akron certainly does make her more valuable now though, but if you're thinking of pulling Silverwolf for a mono quantum team, then let me just warn you that I'm personally not a huge fan of that comp. Mono quantum just isn't as wonderful as people make it sound. It can do okay in the MOC, but in pure fiction, it's just so mid. Even outside of Mono Quantum, you may run into annoyances with the potential RNG nature of her weakness implant, and while you can team build around it to minimize the RNG, it's still something that somewhat restricts you. I'm going to lump the next two characters together because they sort of fulfill the same role. Dr. Ratio and DHL are both imaginary DPS units who excel in the MOC but struggle with pure fiction. Dr. Ratio is a free unit, at least as of now, so he gets placed above DHL, even though DHL has a higher damage ceiling. Dr. Ratio can make decent use of the Herda Hunt Light Cone cruising of the Stellar Sea, making him very free-to-play friendly, but he's also single target, so I don't actually recommend you build him as your first two DPS units just because he won't work as well in AoE game modes. DHL has splash damage and higher damage potential, but he consumes much more skill points than Dr. Ratio, and when borrowing support DHLs from my friends, I've noticed that the AI isn't that good at managing skill points. If you got your free Dr. Ratio, there isn't really a need for you to pull DHL, however DHL is still very strong in the MOC, I just haven't seen enough evidence of him being at the same level in pure fiction. Okay, the last three slots are all standard banner characters. Himako is a very balanced unit, she is a pure fiction staple who excels at AoE damage but struggles with boss killing, so she does very well in pure fiction but struggles in the MOC. Japard and Welt are the two standard banner characters that I unfortunately keep losing my 50-50s to. Japard will work wonders for you in the MOC and in simulated universe, but he is useless in pure fiction. He is an incredible sustain with insanely thick shields, however he doesn't have any CC immunity or cleanses in his kit, so you can still get screwed over by CC. Also, his shield is tied to his ultimate, so until you get a plus 15 ER rope, you may experience downtime on his shielding. Additionally, his shield duration is tied to your character's turns rather than his own turns, so if you have super fast characters, or a Branya, or too much action advance, then his shield will quickly wear off and leave your characters exposed. Welt can be very powerful, but he isn't too amazing in pure fiction, and in the MOC, he only really shines when you get to super late game and are considering zero or one cycling the MOC. This is because he can fulfill the role of a secondary DPS while simultaneously fulfilling a pseudo-sustain role by delaying and slowing enemies enough so that you can destroy them before they get to attack. But early to mid game, while he's not bad, I would probably only recommend him as one of your first 8 units if you're using Acheron, but even then, Gwenaifin can still give him a run for his money. c tier characters are ones that can still be used to great effect, but there are likely better alternatives. We'll start with everyone's favorite little rat, QQ. I don't get the hype for QQ, I even dedicated a whole account to building QQ Mono Quantum, and while I did clear MOC 12 with this team, it wasn't pleasant, required very sweaty try-hard manual gameplay and lots of resets to get the right RNG, as well as requiring me to pull specific teammates, and even then it took me 3 cycles to clear it. This is my main issue with QQ, she is an RNG unit, so you never know what you'll get. Your runs can be wildly inconsistent. When I hit all my RNG rolls, I can clear well under 3 cycles, no problem. But with the most average of luck, and she takes 4-5 to five cycles to clear, and with terrible luck, she's taking 6 cycles or more. Pure Fiction is even more of a struggle. QQ is just not worth it. Unless you adore QQ and are willing to manually play all the time, willing to reset to get the right RNG, and willing to pull your hair out when things don't go your way, I would just use someone else. I don't know where the QQ propaganda started, but I don't see her value. Maybe it's just skill issue on my part, and I just need to get lucky, but if you're a new player, stay away from QQ unless you love the character. Bailu and Lynx are up next. Both are fine, they're completely usable as your healer. Lynx is great with Blade and Clara, okay with everyone else. She has a full party heal and a full party cleanse in her ultimate, making her a great get out of jail free card. 
Her skill is kind of worthless unless you value the taunt it provides, but with Eidolons it also grants CC immunity. Ideally, you want to save her ultimate for when it's needed, but when you're new, your characters will likely always be near death, so you'll have to pop her ultimate when it's up, and Lynx doesn't have the greatest healing. Bailu, on the other hand, is very comfy as long as you aren't dealing with CC or healing reduction effects. She provides fat healing, she can overheal your team, she has a one-time revive that is quite useful to newer players, she can give 10% damage reduction to your characters, and gives them bonus healing when they get hit. In my opinion, she's comfier than Luocha in some situations, since the damage reduction and overheal can make your characters tankier and less prone to getting one shot. A few drawbacks are the lack of a cleanse which can be very fatal, and that's something Luocha has over Bailu, and the RNG nature on Bailu's skill can screw you over. Also, like Luocha, Bailu lacks meaningful party buffs. Finally, we have Fire MC. Fire MC is pretty much here solely because of Acheron, and is really good if you have Trend of the Universal Market. He can also be used in some Copium Firebreak teams, but yeah, mostly here because of Acheron, otherwise not amazing. Okay, onto the D tier. I don't recommend building these characters, but they aren't useless. They just won't be as easy to pull off as the characters above them. For example, Natasha is probably a lot of people's first and only healer, so of course you kinda have to use her in the early game. But once you get someone better, I recommend switching and never looking back unless you like looking at Natasha's back. The next three can all be put together, Su Shang, Dan Hung, and Yan Qing. These are all single target units, so they can do quite well in the MOC, but they'll struggle in pure fiction. I put Su Shang above the other two because she has an action advance built into her kit for extra turns, and with Eidolon she becomes much more skill point friendly. Dan Hung also has potential action advance once you get his E4, Yan Qing unfortunately is currently not in the best spot, maybe one day he will shine, and Aventurine will make him a little more viable, but for now, Yan Qing is down here as the worst standard banner 5 star of the bunch. Next we have characters I haven't tried but should be quite good based on their kit. Clara seems like a solid unit, she has good damage and can be used in both MOC and Pure Fiction, though she's probably not the premier choice in either game mode. Topaz is a hunt character. But like Zila, she's rather unique. She seems like a lot of fun in follow-up teams, and is definitely usable in the MOC, I'm just not sure how she performs in Pure Fiction. Gwenaifen is a great budget option for Acheron teams, and maybe DOT teams as well, but I'm not as familiar with DOT teams. She has a debuff in her basic attack, which is very strong, and debuffs in her skill and ultimate. She also provides quite a bit of vulnerability onto enemies, so overall, a great debuffer, and a great Acheron teammate. Hanya to me is like a budget Sparkle. Sparkle pretty much does everything Hanya does but better, but if you don't have Sparkle then Hanya is the next best thing. Yukong is a tricky one. She can easily help you get the biggest nuke numbers, but it requires special speed tuning to make sure that your DPS goes after her, or else it'll all go to waste. I think she can be amazing, but it requires decent game knowledge and proper team building so I don't really recommend her to new players, especially before you can properly farm relics, and without her E6, she does feel a little bit clunky. Serval is a very competent lightning DPS who can spam her ultimate for decent AoE damage. She seems to do very well in both MOC and Pure Fiction, but if you have Acheron or another lightning DPS like Jingyuan or Kafka, her value won't be as high. Shui Yi is great in the MOC, she kinda ignores weakness type like Acheron, so she's a reliable breaker and can be used regardless of enemy weakness, but I'm just not sure how well she does in a pure fiction without follow-up buffs due to how single target focused she can be. Shui Yi is definitely not a weak unit, and with Eidolon she gets much better. Now for the haven't tried but probably not that good tier, we start with Gallagher. Before people yell at me again for this one, I'll admit that Gallagher may be good, but he suffers from Luocha Syndrome. He has potentially decent damage, and potentially decent healing, but that's pretty much it. He could be alright with Acheron since he applies debuffs, but everyone also has Fire MC. Sampo seems alright, especially in DOT teams like when paired with Kafka and Black Swan, but outside of those teams, I'm not so sure if he's the best option. Sampo is alright in most game modes, but he seems to only really do well when enemies are wind weak. So, when they're not win weak, I'm not so sure how well he would do. Misha is technically not that bad as well. 
He relies on stacking up his ultimate, which is very similar to Jing Yuan's Lightning Lord, so he suffers from the same RNG nature of the damage spread. You can't control who the ultimate hits unless there's only one target. Misha also prefers enemies that can be frozen, and needs a team that can use a lot of skill points to stack his ultimate up. I think that while he has potential to be good, he's more niche than other characters. Hook suffers from single target syndrome and prefers fire weak enemies. Luka is in a similar position but for physical weakness. Physical trailblazer also doesn't seem that great either. He looks like he's meant to be played around physical break. Similar to Luka, but these characters require proper enemy weakness typing, meaning they're not super flexible units to build around. While they can do well when the enemy typing works in their favor, they're not very universal. Arlon is also single target and mid. You can find Arlon zero cycles out there, but even those mad lads will admit that Arlon is not the wisest investment, and a lot of those zero cycles have insanely invested supports. As for pure fiction, I think he's even harder to pull off there. Honestly, just use Serval instead as your lightning DPS if you have no other option. Finally, we have the leakers. I'm not up to date with leaks, but I know Aventurine is coming out soon. Probably the same day this video comes out. I have to record this now because I'm leaving on a trip. But Aventurine, he seems like he might have potential to be a safe pick. I can see him being very comfy to use in the MOC. He's definitely going to be goaded in simulated universe. And I think he won't be that bad to use in pure fiction because he has damage in his follow-up attack. In my opinion, he's kind of like a super upgraded Jepard. He has very strong shields that aren't tied to his ultimate. He provides your whole team effect resistance, and I believe he debuffs the enemy to take more crit damage as well. And all of this in addition to his bonus follow-up attack damage. I think my favorite thing about Adventurine is if you're like me and have a lot of defense main stat relics, with double crit rolls, you can finally use them on someone. For Robin, from my limited dreaming, I think she has the potential to be a safe pick as well, though I'm reserving my judgment until she officially releases. Boot Hill is a hunt character, so my expectations aren't the highest, but hopefully he can surprise me in a good way. To summarize, I suggest pulling and building the universal units first, ones that can do well for you in all content, Unless, of course, there's a character you really like, because in the end, these games are meant to be played for fun, and if you enjoy playing your favorite characters, then play your favorite characters. In my case, it was Blade, and while Blade is not a top tier character from a meta perspective, he will always be number one in my heart.